Welcome to the first episode of Riot Rumble here live from the Media Hub on riotradio.ca. My name is Justin. I'm your co-host with me today is Dan, my other co-host. Really excited to be here. Happy to get the show underway. And if you guys didn't already know, this show is all about the world of the WWE, the ins and outs, and just everything that's going on. So this past weekend, I was going to get straight into it. We had uh, one of their bigger PLEs with WWE Backlash taking place from Lyon in France. So there's the poster there in all its glory. And oh man, what a weekend it was, Dan. What a night. That crowd. Have you seen anything like that before in a WWE crowd? Yeah, no. Honestly, that was like a one of one generational thing. It overall just felt like the new era. It really did. Yeah. I thought uh, just right from the off, it just seemed like the place was live. It was jumping and like my brothers and I were just in awe watching it. Yeah. So it was great. It was like a soccer crowd. It was unbelievable. <laughs> I couldn't believe the fans, the crowd. Just yeah. awesome. So. It really made that event like so historic. Yeah. So that being said, the opening match, we did have the team of Randy Orton and Kevin Owens, a.k.a. RKO, versus <laughs> the uh, newly formed Bloodline with Solo Sokoa and Tom Tonga. Now, this match just from the start was just an absolute war they actually made it a street match or a street fight i should say right off the off and it just weapons and just brutal chaos was going everywhere and they're going to the crowd acknowledge the roman reigns chant before the fight yes unbelievable unbelievable you know it was crazy because we want roman is something that we've heard a lot recently but in france though yeah it was like it was booming and made me think roman was going to come out at one point they acknowledged the tribal chief they got roman in there and then now we kind of had the first real test for tom there this was his wwe televised debut they said and uh you know what he was taking on randy orton and he was uh kind of getting schooled kind of yep. like a welcome to the wwe moment and then uh, here we have Solo who introduced the trash can like it's ECW. <laughs> and it was just, it was so cool because like they were doing like headshots and stuff that we yeah. hadn't seen for a while. Yeah, these guys just kept reaching under the ring for new weapons and <laughs> it was just a bloodbath. They were just beating each other. Yeah, and like look at the referee's face there. Too, right? <laughs> He's like, oh no. And it was it was cool too because I feel like uh, once the match kind of eased into things, neither team pulled their punches. There's a lot of spots. There's a nice table spot between KO and Tom in there where you gave him the spot splash and then right after that solo with the Samoan drop on Randy through the table yeah. which I thought was pretty cool the prime bottle <laughs> awesome we got to get the prime in there yeah it was it was pretty cool because like I've always wondered what would happen if someone just launched it and finally someone did and this was like near the start too Tom kind of set the ground so it was cool I thought uh overall this match as a whole was one of their uh was one of their better I guess openers to a pay-per-view yep. and I feel like you know like we were saying the crowd was just loving it they were fighting in the crowd they were like you know helping randy because randy didn't know where they yeah. were at one point and uh ko was kind of getting two on one so the crowd is helping randy get back into it and it was just uh it was pretty interesting to see because it was looking like rko was gonna get the win i know it was close and kevin owens too threw a stunner a couple of old classic moves which yeah. i absolutely loved randy orton just looked jacked yeah unbelievable but yeah the surprise bloodline cheating again <laughs> <laughs> i know what else is new <laughs> crawling out from under the ring tongaloa <laughs> Oh man, there they are. Look at that shot. Tonga Loa, the brother of Tom Tonga, and uh, just making his on camera debut for the WWE as uh, Tonga Loa. He, he used to be called Camacho back in the day for all you oh, classic really? wrestling nice. fans there. Yeah, he was there. And then in, uh, in TNA, he went by something else. But now finally embracing his Samoan heritage, joining the bloodline. Paul Heyman looked absolutely stunned to see yep. his arrival. So, yeah, and Solo hit the Samoan spike for the win. Yeah, oh man. It now, was... is this the new bloodline? Is this the future of the bloodline? Or is this just like a temporary thing? What do you think? Oh man, you're putting me on the spot here, but I'm going to look at the camera and put up the ones. I think for me, right now, this is the new bloodline. They are kind of running the show. It's not the same without Roman and the Usos, obviously. But the thing that I will differentiate the two is I want to call this the bloodline, but Roman and them are the ones, you know, yeah. if that really, if that makes sense. I think this is like kind of the, the push that Solo needs. Yeah. And finally, we could kind of take him seriously as a single star. Is this his first win in like 34 or 35 <laughs> <Yeah>. matches? <laughs> so he's on an 0-34 run. Yeah, so it was not for he, Solo. He finally gets his win. My brother said that too. He's like, just, uh, I think Solo just went over 36. <laughs> and finally got a win so this could be the turning point now 
in terms of future of the bloodline, I think we're going to see this roll out till at least SummerSlam. Yep. I think you could agree with me on that yep. in the sense of I don't think they're going to rush back Roman and I don't really see the final boss yep. coming back next week. So the sky's really the limit, in my yep. opinion. There's so many more relatives that could come in. Mm -hmm. I wasn't even expecting Tom yeah, DeLoe. I don't know. So I knew they'd cheat, but. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to be interesting to say the least. I'm excited for SmackDown on Friday for yep. sure. Awesome. So next match, we had Bailey versus Naomi versus Tiffany for the WWE Women's Championship. Yes. Good match. I thought it was a solid match overall. Um, I think the MVP of the night is Tiffany Stratton. I thought she had a great showing. I got to say, match. these outfits every week with Stif Tiffany Stratton, pretty wild. Yep. I don't know uh, where her influence is coming from, but I know she had uh, a couple of classic ones the last few weeks, so looking good yeah i really i enjoy her in ring work because she's so athletic she used to be a uh team usa gymnast mm -hmm. and she you could tell by the way she moves in that ring doing her cartwheels and stuff and i thought uh honestly her her best was just on display i i don't mind naomi i, I but i definitely think she's uh a bit better now since she's come back initially i feel like any rust is gone yeah and like bailey as champion you know it's always good to see I thought uh, <laughs> I thought when they hit the Tiffany yeah, Stratton with the one together. D, <laughs> me and my brothers were shook. We were like, there's no way they just did the one D, and then Tiff was done after yeah. that. So yeah, tag teamed her. Yeah, it was kind of a one on one, which they, uh, which Bailey, sorry, did prevail and win, pinning Naomi there. Yeah. And uh, overall, a solid match. I thought it was the better of the two women's matches. Um, does Bailey's title reign does does this mean anything really to you? Or so what? Bailey wins again, but I feel like Tiffany's gonna win eventually i, I know. feel like they're pushing her right so maybe this is the last hurrah for bailey and then tiffany's gonna come in and take yeah, over I, for a while because she seems like she's uh she's a future champ yeah i think so too if you didn't know by the way when she was in nxt she actually was the nxt women's champion okay. she that's where she kind of yeah. got her popularity then it was actually becky lynch who beat her funny oh. enough so no one could beat her becky lynch came down from the main roster and the she man. was actually the one that beat tiffany so Perfect. i'm with you it's definitely tiffy time as they were doing you know i'm <laughs> with it and she's just so over right now to yep. where it's like even though she lost the match like yep. i said was my mvp she yep. was great so i'm excited to see the future of her and in terms of bailey like yeah i i like bailey but definitely need Tiffy to get in there. On to another match where we need someone to win, and they didn't win again. Damian <laughs> Priest versus Jey Uso for the World Heavyweight Champion, and Damian Priest with the victory. Yeah. Jey Uso just loses again. When's he going to win? But I know. But first off, the crowd. The I crowd, know. That was probably the biggest ovation of the night. Oh, Every, yeah. The crowd yeeting for Jey Uso. <laughs> and he came in through the crowd, too. Yeah. So it was awesome. It looked like a scene out of a movie. And, like, Michael Cole and um, and Corey Graves on commentary kind of let it play. Yep. And then at one point, some, one of them goes, so how do you feel? And it's like, dude, I've never felt like this before ever. Yeah. Like, it looked like they were kind of breaking character the way they were just, yeah. like, you know, taking it all in. Oh man, like just that shot the only alone. Thing gives I missed was Pat McAfee there on the table doing the eat. <laughs> yeah, we needed that. <laughs> I thought Michael Cole kind of played it off well too. He's like, I'm not Pat, I can't get yeah. up. But on to the actual match though, I was really impressed with both men. This is a nice yeah, shot good there. Good match, really good match. And I thought, you know what? This was the first match for both of these guys where I thought you could tell that they're both now stars. You know, you put in Damien on his own for a bit without the Judgment Day. You get Jey Uso coming off a big win at WrestleMania, which kind of, you know, the match kind of fell flat against his brother. So this was like his redemption. And I thought it was awesome. I thought uh, with, all, with all that being said, I think both superstars kind of get elevated here. And this is a razor's edge. I love that he does the razor's edge and they call it yeah. that still. But um, yeah, unfortunately, though, Damien had help. And I say unfortunately because he did not want the help. No. So no. it seemed like he was not really rocking with the Judgment Day coming down and interfering. Were you excited to see JD McDonough and Finn Balor? I'm not excited, but I expected to see them. I knew they'd come in, and I know they'd kind of hinted at previous weeks that uh, Damien Priest didn't want the help and didn't want interference. He wanted to do it on his own. And yep. Obviously, you can see from this, he's not happy, and there is uh, there's trouble within the Judgment Day. So yeah, I'm with you. Where do you think this goes? Do you think uh, we're gonna have a fight between the Judgment Day? Do you think they're gonna split up? I think eventually we're gonna get Damian Priest versus JD in more of like a like a Finn Balor's kind of the mutual the neutral. Sorry, but I think we're gonna see Damian Priest brutalize JD to where Finn Balor is kind of gonna turn. That's yeah. where I think they're gonna go, and I think. I think like long-term storytelling, I think SummerSlam, we get Demon Finn Balor coming back 
and he'll take on, I hope, a babyface version of Damian Priest. I, I love this version of Balor, and I yeah. don't want to give it up for anything. Mm -hmm. But there definitely is trouble. I think ever since um, JD's been involved, there's there hasn't really been that same connection. Because yep. JD and Finn go way back to okay. like Ireland in like 20 plus years. So he that's kind of why he's there, and Priest never really liked it. So mm -hmm. I don't know. Is this the end of the Judgment Day? Rhea Ripley's not there. Yep. Dominic Mysterio's injured. Yep. This is going on. Like It's not looking good for uh, WWE's best faction right now. Good fight, though. Great end of the fight. The size of heaven for the middle ropes. Amazing. Awesome. So good for Damian Priest. Retains his title. Probably going to watch the uh, the film afterwards and not be too happy because I don't even think he knew about the interference. I think he just yeah, kind of saw it afterwards and then they gave a beat down <laughs> yeah. to, uh, to Jey Uso it, in the ring. It was awesome after the match when they were beating him down. He like pulled him off. They're like, yeah. no, that was right before that shot. He's yeah. like, what are you guys doing? It's like, yeah. this was my moment. So yeah, it's definitely going to be interesting tonight on Raw. And then poor Jey Uso, like, <laughs> when are they going to let the guy win? Like the crowd loves him. I love him. Pat McAfee loves you know, him. Ye, they're like, really teasing ye, us here, like, you know? Just let him win. I, I feel like, again, unfortunately, yeah. we're going to be looking at Jey Uso winning post-Bloodline matchups mm -hmm. because I feel like he's going to get involved some way, shape, or form. But it is unfortunate because I really did think he had it because he yeah. did hit the splash. He hit the spear, then the Uso splash, and he kicked out. But yeah, it, it's going to be interesting to see for both sides. But this match really elevated them both yeah. for me. The athleticism in this match, too, like... It was awesome. Kind of stood above, I think, the other matches, just high flying Jey Uso like man yeah these guys are wild yeah I can't get much better than that so yeah. moving on to the next match now we have Asuka and Kairi Sane the Kabuki Warriors versus Jade Cargill and Bianca Belair for the WWE Women's Tag Team Championships unfortunately this match kind of fell flat for me uh we got Jade and Bianca winning there becoming tag team champs but honestly it didn't really excite me until the end where we got that crazy glam slam from uh, jade cargill and then we got the uh the bianca Belair finisher there the est so i i want to say i was disappointed but it doesn't really take away from the historic feat that they just did so yeah. what were your thoughts overall good match this? um coming after that damian priest jay uso match hard to follow i know I... and the first match too for the women's championship um good match though they look good and uh We'll have to see where that goes with that. Yeah, I'm a big, like, Jade Cargill kind of guy. And yep. I love Bianca Belair. Yep. So naturally, I'm gravitated to their story. Mm -hmm. I think one of them's eventually going to turn, and I hope it's Bianca. Yep. I love Jade, but, like, I want to see heel Bianca. It's Seems been like too there's long. something going on there between them. So. Yeah, so yep. we'll see what happens. But then moving on now to the main event of the hour. We had the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes taking on the phenomenal AJ Styles for the Undisputed WWE Championship in the main event. Cody's first title defense after finishing the story. Unbelievable. And it was just amazing. What a fight. It was so long. It, it lived up so to good. it. Right from the off, the crowd actually sang all of Cody Rhodes' theme yeah, song, Acapella, awesome. which was amazing. It's crazy, too. Like, that crowd, like, compared to the American crowds, the American crowd's good, but, like, this was something else. I wonder if they're going to hit more Europe. They uh, have to. Towns yeah. and countries and... But that was, yeah, that crowd and that entrance, unbelievable. Oh, Cody so Rhodes, good. he just couldn't stop smiling. <laughs> I know. He eh? was smiling. The fight was about to start, and he was just smiling. The ring, the bell went, and they just stood there <laughs> smiling because yeah. the crowd was so awesome. So. It was amazing. And then even them chanting AJ's phenomenal in French yeah. over and over, jumping down, clapping. Like, it was so good. And it AJ's just... outfit, too, yeah. apparently was a recreation of his against uh, Dustin Rhodes. Yes. Um, so, yeah, he looked good. Man, the guy's jacked. He is. I eh? watched a video on him talking about how he's doing like ice baths and cold plunges and how he changed his diet. And yeah, definitely. It's he paying looks off. good. He's actually one of, if not my favorite wrestlers ever to watch in the ring. Like AJ's in ring yep. is like second to none for me. And I feel like this match was just both of them on all cylinders. This Cody Cutter was crazy Cody too. Cody Cutter crazy. Um, did the black and purple give you a little like Undertaker vibe? It like did. retro <laughs> Undertaker? I was wondering like if that's kind of the colors and like the threads they were using back then. But yeah, it was cool. And like I like how he has the number one being like the phenomenal yeah. one too. It was, it was overall really good. I think this match is, I like, you know obviously we'll get into who won but it really just like makes me appreciate aj even more that he's still going he's yeah. a two-time wwe champion as well so he's looking for that third one but unfortunately he did not get the win as cody was able to hit a crossroads, crossroads. and eventually pin him one two three and retain that gold but yeah. Overall, like for Cody Rhodes, this is probably the best possible way to start his championship yeah. reign. Yeah, these guys, they gave it all. Um, the crowd was just loving it, and what a great fight. Yeah, I think for, for Cody Rhodes, this is the perfect way to kind of usher himself into the new era because now that we're uh, you know done the first PLE, 
I think Cody Rhodes' championship reign, no, it, it yeah. could be better than people thought after that match. It was nice to see AJ Styles go after that uh, shoulder, too, after the Carmelo <laughs> Hayes fight. Yeah. We were wondering how that shoulder was holding up. And, uh, yeah, he definitely took a pounding. So we'll see how Cody is. When do you think Cody's going to fight again? That's a great question. I think um, he's he's going to try and be a fighting champion, yep. similar to Rollins. So we could even see him on SmackDown. Who knows? But in terms of, like, big fight, I hope they kind of save it for the next PLE. Okay. Uh, I, don't, I love Cody Rhodes, so I, I'm not, like, hating when I say this, mm -hmm. but I don't want to see this guy fight every week. It mm -hmm. kind of dimin diminishes, sorry, the overall value yep. of the title. You know, that Carmelo Hayes match was, like, it was, you know, a pop quiz, yeah. right? We got it night yeah, we up. didn't know it was happening. No idea. It happened, and it actually was really good. Exactly. But, like, if we're going to advertise Cody to fight every week, mm -hmm. I kind of want him to be more like a John Jones type of fighter where it's, like, kind of, like, special every time yeah. he fights, not, like, you know, just something that's going to go out there every week. So Now, his title wasn't online for that Carmelo Hayes fight, but do you think in some other uh, upcoming nights, do you think he'll put his title on, or will it just be for big main events? I feel like he definitely will for, uh, for like, some SmackDowns. But then again, though, like, the big main events, like, yeah. He's a draw, and everyone's going to watch him. He could go out there and talk about his dad for the 20 yep. million time oh, and yeah. get so many, like, ovations and numbers to where he's such, like, a figure now where, like, that title almost seems, like, almost secondary because of how big he is, mm -hmm. and he carries it well. And, you know, AJ said he's not going to be able to, yep. and I think after that match, he could kind of hold that title high in the sky and be like, you know what I'm here to say is the face of the company. Yep. So I'm excited. And do you think he'll be able to challenge Roman Reigns' reign? Oh, man. that was a long title run. It was, eh? That's hard. <laughs> you know, that, that one's hard. I'm a big Roman Reigns guy, if you guys didn't know. Yep. I think, um, realistically speaking, like all jokes aside, he should have it for over a year. Yep. Like, I want him to carry it into WrestleMania next year. Yep. Whether he wins or loses, that's up for debate. But I definitely want, like, a year and a bit at least. Kind of similar to CM Punk's yep. back in the day when he had it for 434 days. That was, like, a huge deal. Mm -hmm. I want Cody to kind of have a similar run and let the other belt kind of yep. be that one that kind of changes hands. But this one, I definitely think he'll have a long reign. Awesome. So that's it for Backlash. Now on to the WWE draft. Um, the draft. That was awesome. It was great. Really good. So uh, some of the big highlights, obviously, with the Raw roster, we've got World Heavyweight Champion Damian Priest. Um, so the storyline with the Judgment Day is going to continue there. Uh, Becky Lynch, the Women's World Champion on Raw. Um, What's next for Becky Lynch? Yeah, Becky, that's a great question. I think with Becky Lynch, right, she's kind of at that point in her career where it's Becky Lynch. She's the man. Yep. Doesn't really have anything left to prove. And I feel like, you know, when you see her kind of beefing with Alexa Bliss and Nia mm -hmm. Jax, it's like, okay, cool. Does this mean she's going to drop the title? Because just to what I alluded to before, her last title reign as the NXT Women's Champion, she actually had the belt for, I think, all but a month. It wasn't yep. a long reign. So she's due for a long title reign. I feel like... Not she has to put herself over, but I kind of want to see, like, if this is going to be the man again. Like, I want her to have a good, nice title reign. So Now, did she tell Liv Morgan that she'll give her a title fight? Yep. Yeah. Okay. And I want to see Liv versus Becky. And I think eventually you got to kind of inc include Rhea Ripley long term. And I yep. think we get those two maybe SummerSlam, if you know the timing adds up. But I think they're building up for Rhea and Becky part two. Awesome. Do you want to talk about some of the raw roster choices? Yeah, sure. So one that definitely stands out to me as we uh, continue down the line. So we have Awesome Truth. Uh, they are obviously staying on Raw. But I did want to talk about Imperium because Sami Zayn is also on Raw. Yep. And so it's looking like these two, despite, you, you know, you might think that they're interlocked. It seems like Gunther's kind of moving on from Sami Zayn, which I yep. think is interesting. Yep. So... I think long term is Imperium. Do you do you think they're going to take the more like we don't need the titles to win kind of route and let Sami Zayn kind of do his own thing or like they seem like they just want to beat people up. Exactly. That's the vibe I'm getting right now. So. Yeah. <laughs> I think with this upcoming King of the Ring, I think it would be the perfect kind of like layup for Sami Zayn to go on and have a good run yep. while Gunther retains his status by winning the King of the Ring. I think that's a nice little trade-off. Gunther scares me. Yeah, I'm yeah. scared of him. Yeah, he's he's, he's definitely he's definitely <laughs> something. And uh, you know, just to keep moving down the line here, CM Punk, big name that got announced. Yeah, I love CM Punk. Waiting for his return. Yeah, we Were need you, to see him fighting. Yeah, I know. Eh? Were yeah. you happy with uh, with his, um, I guess, appearance with Drew McIntyre? Yeah, I just want to see him fight. I, I just know. want to see those two fight and just get it over with and I know. move on to something new. I want to see like them have an actual match start to finish, but yeah. have it like, let's say like a no holds barred yeah. where they just could like beat each other up, go yeah. into the crowd. Like at this point with all the buildup, you need that, right? And Drew just signed a new contract. So yep. we know he's sticking around. He's not leaving for another uh, another brand. I know. Eh? And that's like, good. If he was all elite, oh, I'd yeah. be so upset after this run. Uh, yeah, moving down the list, anyone else that stands out for you on Raw? Braun Strowman. 
Oh man, the monster and wing monsters. Unbelievable. That guy was so big. Exactly. Yeah. He came in and just <laughs> looks like a monster. So yeah. I'm excited to see what they do with his storyline. Um, there's no way he looks like that and they're not going to do anything with him <laughs> and he's not going to just beat people up on raw. Yep. Um, LWO big Ray Mysterio fan. Yeah, so there you go. happy there on raw. We talked about Drew McIntyre. Obviously if Damian priest is there, the judgment stays there. We talked about problems in the judgment day. What do you think is going to happen? Yeah, I mean, I think we're going to start off by getting like a Judgment Day meeting tonight yep. on Raw for sure. I think from there, like I said, I think they're going to allude to uh, JD versus Damien. Okay. But we really need Rhea Ripley back because as yeah. soon as she's been gone, the Judgment Day has just been in turmoil. You yeah, know? And she wasn't drafted, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I'm assuming, you know, she's there. She's part of the Raw roster likely. Do we see her at all, or do you think they're going to keep her out for a bit? I think just to really hype up the return, I think they should keep her off TV. Yep. Because, um, what's his face, uh, Dominic Mysterio has yep. an injury. He has that sling on. Yep. However, we're still seeing him on TV every week. But yep. I think with Rhea Ripley, because she's so big now, you kind of have to keep her off. So her, so her eventual return is like top tier. Okay. So unfortunately for the Judgment Day, I don't think Mommy's coming back anytime no. soon. Talk about returns, Ilya Dragunov coming back. Oh amazing it's like i saw him say that it's almost destiny that him and gunther on are on the same show yep. if you didn't know gunther had like a 700 day reign as nxt uk champ and it was actually Ilya dragonov that beat him yeah so dragonov is like one of two people that really beat gunther clean strange how they ended up on the same roster i know eh? it's like fate a lot of people are saying maybe <laughs> maybe eventually dragonov goes to imperium what are okay. your thoughts on that yeah i could see that totally I'd be with it. It'd definitely be an upgrade on uh, on Vinci. I, yep. I like, sorry, Vinci, but you know, <laughs> it would definitely be an upgrade. So that does intrigue me for sure. And then do got a couple more names too, yep. real quick. Seth freaking Rollins. When is man. Seth Rollins coming back? We I haven't know. seen him. He got hurt. We heard he had surgery. Obviously, him and Becky are both on the Raw roster, mm -hmm. but when Seth freaking Rollins coming back? I, I feel need to see an intro. Something. I need a crazy outfit. Yeah. I need to chant and sing the song. I miss it. <laughs> yeah. It's so fitting, you know, that the last time we saw Seth Rollins, who was wearing the Shield gear, came out to yep. the Shield music, you know, like it still gives me goosebumps. But yeah, he post WrestleMania, he was dubbed the MVP of WrestleMania by The Rock, you know, you're repping him too. So I guess uh, there's some substance there for if The Rock's calling him the MVP taking his time off but like he's one guy that like we need back yeah. like we need him back in some way really form. like for me he's the star of that raw roster um we need him back he'll be back soon yeah. even if he's just back to like muck it up and <laughs> cause some trouble yeah but i need to see the wacky outfits and i need to chant the song i so. know i need to see the dances too yeah. you know and then before we move on there's one name that i see here that we have to talk about is sheamus banger after <laughs> banger after banger i love that sheamus <laughs> is back loving the bangers and you know what big match for him tonight against gunther yep. for uh for the king of the ring stuff yeah. so that'll be a good fight hopefully we we get a banger <laughs> and i think we will yeah, but i know we love sheamus out here we got a little toy here as well yep. so big sheamus people so I'm really glad that he's back. And what a first round match. Like, I know, eh? Like I that feel, could be the finals. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like obviously there's a big story there for Gunther, but then bringing Sheamus, Sheamus back, right? And we got a lot of injuries post WrestleMania. I don't think they're gonna make Sheamus lose right I off know. the bat, but you never know, right? Yeah. So maybe just putting it out there, maybe Vinci <laughs> surprises and cause Gunther, yep. who knows? But in all seriousness, I do think Sheamus is due for a win. So yeah. I'm hoping. I think they gotta uh they got to give him the payday so he can get some burgers. <laughs> him and Drew McIntyre can get it together. <laughs> but okay, so moving on to the SmackDown roster. So right off the bat, the champions do stay. So we got Cody Rhodes, the undisputed champion. Bailey, the SmackDown Women's Champion. A Town Down Under, the SmackDown Tag Team Champions. And Logan Paul as the United States Champion will all be remaining on SmackDown. Now, right off the bat, that is a great championship roster, if you Smackdown ask me. SmackDown is stacked. They really like, are. It's, it's a heavy lineup. Yeah. And then even just a backpack on that, too. Like, they got Jade Cargill and Bianca, who are now the women's champions, yep. too. Like, it's a really good roster. And I think, like, the good thing about SmackDown is that when you have really good champions, it's like, okay, cool. The mids don't have to be amazing, but the, the mid cards are still really cool, yep. too. You know, if just going down the list, we see Kevin Owens and Randy Orton, who just had a banger of a are match. Are going to stay together, do you think? Oh, they're kind of putting them that they will. They did that RKO show <laughs> instead the of the RK KO and show. See, I think they hinted at, like, the, they said the first RKO 
KO show, so I'm assuming we're going to see more. Yeah. They're good together. I they like are. Them together. They seem uh, to be having fun. Yeah. The crowd loves them. <laughs> I'm assuming we didn't get those RKO shirts. Yeah, for, for one nothing, month, right? right? So, And even at WrestleMania, they, like, came down together. <laughs> they yeah. were supposed to fight each other. So yeah. I'm with it. You know what? Randy Orton did great work with Matt Riddle yep. before he got injured, and now he's kind of aligning himself with Kevin Owens again. So and I'm okay with it. maybe there's more room in the tag team, right? There like could maybe be, yeah. with so many big single superstars right now, I think for Randy Orton, if he wants to stay on top, maybe the tag team roads the one to go right now. So Yeah, definitely wouldn't be opposed to that. Moving on to, we also got, this is an interesting one right here. We have the Pride, which consists of Bobby Lashley, B-Fab, and the Street Profits. Yep. I think this is the faction with the most potential. And I say that because we have Bobby Lashley, who's a former multi-time uh, WWE champion. B-Fab is really good on the mic. Probably, like, I don't know if this is a hot take, but probably top three on the mic for women, yep, in my opinion. Sure. And then the Street Profits, who are a notable tag team that just haven't really gone over the hump since they like lost their titles years ago. I don't know. I really want to see more from them. They had a great match at WrestleMania against mm -hmm. the final destination, I think. Yep. Yeah, that, that faction is cool, too. So just with that being said, the Pride, do they mean anything to you when, it, when you look at this roster? Like, do you Are you intrigued by them? It's very intriguing. I also wonder if we're going to see Carmelo Hayes somehow linked up into there, whether he's an opponent. Um, we saw that interaction with Carmelo Hayes and Bobby Lashley yep. last week. So I don't know if we're going to see some infighting. I don't know if Carmelo Hayes is going to try to match up with people. He seems like he's a bit of a, a loner on his own and doesn't want help. So yeah, I, love I don't Mello. know if he'll link up with people because there'll be an issue with this group here. But um yeah, that's some big people. Bobby Lashley, that's a big boy. <laughs> I know, eh? He's always been massive. I will say to backpack on you, Melo Hayes actually does have history with B-Fab because back right. in the NXT days, it was Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams beefing um, the... I always forget their name because they changed it, but I think they were still called Top Dollar back okay. then. And it was uh, B-Fab, this guy, Swerve Strickland, who's now actually on AEW. But B-Fab was with Strickland and, you know, Carmelo Hayes beat Strickland. So awesome. that was like, they do have some history there Something for sure. To look forward to. And Carmelo Hayes, that fight with Cody Rhodes that was a good fight yeah there's obviously that, that one uh, I don't know if it was a mistake I don't know <laughs> if it was planned but uh yeah the fight for his first fight to come out on WWE and you get to fight the champion in your first fight yeah that's uh and put up a good fight too like he beat Cody pretty good yeah as um, I do say Melo is money and Melo yeah. don't miss so I'm with you I'm yeah. really excited to see what he could do and I think he's like probably the guy with the most potential right now across both yeah. rosters and good on him getting on the Smackdown roster because it's like we said it's stacked I know right another guy to bring up LA Knight I know you're a fan of LA, LA Knight, Knight. <laughs> yeah love LA Knight I don't know what they're gonna do with him though like are him and AJ Styles obviously there's a spoiler there AJ Styles also on the Smackdown roster LA Knight and AJ Styles gonna keep fighting they hate each other yeah or is that over you think I think unfortunately it has to be over as much as I like both of them I'm a big AJ Styles guy obviously and I love I've been following LA Knight since he was Eli Drake on TNA so yeah. I, I really like them both but with LA Knight, he's now kind of in that limbo period because he's not as over as he used to be. He yep. didn't get a title back then, hasn't got the title just yet. So I feel like he kind of needs to do not some like soul searching, not yep. being that extreme. However, we do need to see what's next for LA okay. Knight. And I don't think it's AJ Styles. And looking at this roster, like who does he fight? Like, do they put him up against Cody maybe for a title shot or? He could maybe even maybe Carmelo Hayes. That, that could be another yep. matchup. I would love it to see AJ or sorry LA Knight versus uh, Logan Paul in like a one on one yeah, for the US title. Um, I feel like both of those two, honestly, on the mic are really good, yep. and they could like reignite some of the the spark they had before. But yeah, honestly, like with LA Knight, I don't know where we go from here, unfortunately. Yeah. But I'm a big LA Knight guy. I know you are as yep. well. Yeah, and uh, LA Knight, yeah, you know, like he's amazing. So <laughs> and Logan Paul, you just mentioned Logan Paul. Is he ever gonna lose? I know, eh? He's, Has he lost? He I don't has. Think he's, he's lost to Roman, yeah, okay. but that's it. Okay. I don't think he's lost to anyone else, which is pretty crazy. Maybe to it's say. in his prime contract. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, as long as I'm here, I cannot lose. So, yeah, that's a good point. I'm ex I really like Logan Paul. I feel like he's actually embraced the WWE really yeah. well to where he, fun fact, is the longest reigning current champion. Mm -hmm. So, that being said, I'm not mad at it because he's, you know, done his work and is, you know, paying off. Yeah, really. He's a legit, legit wrestler, so... Yep. And final SmackDown roster notable here is the Bloodline. Oh, the Bloodline. So we've got Solo Sokoa, Tama Tonga, Tonga Loa, Paul Heyman. The wise man. Does the wise man even want to be here anymore? <laughs> I know. Eh? He, he hasn't like... talked to Roman, he said, since WrestleMania. He pulled Roman Reigns out of the draft 
what's going on here there's a lot that's going <laughs> on and do you know what earlier on when we showed that photo of them putting up the ones Heyman was like in disbelief yeah. he was looking like he was gonna cry at ringside yeah. it's crazy because the bloodline is kind of reaching new heights to where I'm like I didn't even expect this at all mm -hmm. this is a great swerve like in terms of like let's say Smackdown domination just throwing it out there maybe solo challenges Cody maybe yeah. he says I'm gonna do what my cousin couldn't and maybe that sparks even more turmoil yeah and who knows and saying that maybe that's where Kevin Owens and Randy Orton come in maybe yep. they back Cody because Cody can't do that by himself with the bloodline it's too many guys now right exactly so, that yeah there you go that could be Paul Heyman himself. I think he's scared he I was protecting he uh Kevin Owens from getting yeah, beat in the I ring think, which was laying nuts. over his body we saw him shaking his head at Jay Uso in the hallway just like yeah I don't know what's going on and it's crazy because paul Heyman, for 20 plus 30 plus years has always been the most sure person in the room yeah. and this is the first time where even he's at a loss so it's been crazy so yeah. i'm glad we got a chance to go through the draft but before we wrap it up there are some free agents now you did mention one of them the tribal chief himself still my tribal chief roman reigns we need roman back we need him we want yeah, roman we want roman and you know you just mentioned now that paul Heyman did withdraw him from the draft yep. so there's i like that they're still keeping him in the loop but what does this mean long term? Does Roman come back and, you know, maybe finish some unfinished business before he handles the bloodline? Are we going to see Roman come back as like a Brock Lesnar type thing where he could just go on both rosters because that's yep. the kind of superstar he is? Now, right off the bat, Roman Reigns versus blank. What do you want that to be his first match back? It's kind of I spot. almost feel like him versus Solo. Like right off. Yeah. Like okay. I just think solo's done some stuff he's i don't think he's talking to him i don't think he's making these choices because roman's telling him to yeah so i think he's gone rogue and i just think i feel like there's a rift in the bloodline and when roman comes back and he wants everyone to stick the finger up in the ring i don't think they're going to yeah and maybe they jump him maybe that's what happens oh, right could. i would be so sad yeah. as you know but that's not a bad shout at all one guy that i do want to see them in her line again with is obviously his shield brother seth rollins yep. maybe just maybe does seth rollins help roman does he have his back this time That'd be you cool. know why it could yep. be cool um roman reigns also with the usos maybe they come back together who yep. knows but the sky's the limit with him and i feel like you know what it's unfortunate that he's gone but he's still our tribal chief you already know put up the ones and then you mentioned the usos like jimmy we haven't seen him mm -hmm. since he got beat by the bloodline his own folks <laughs> um he wasn't drafted he's not really listed on the free agent so yeah i wonder what's going on there i wonder if he's hurt too a lot of injuries they got smoked at wrestlemania off the uh off the entrance yeah. ramp they took a the bad table. Like they missed the table so <laughs> yeah maybe he's hurt that yeah um, that that could be a genuine yeah. possibility i yeah, know maybe we he's talked taking about a break but i don't think he's coming back to the bloodline i think we're gonna have to see the usos reunite and hopefully you know they're like this their fingers crossed yep. they're tight again and then hopefully we could get roman in and they we could can be the ones in harmony <laughs> we could all do it you know so <laughs> fingers crossed um another one i do want to mention now briefly again is rhea ripley yep we did mention her earlier i think long term has to be becky lynch again rhea yep. versus becky Absolutely. don't really see anything wrong with that yeah and she's hurt she gave up her belt she didn't lose it she's gonna get it back she's yep. too big of a star yeah and then moving on oh man this just saying this name every time as i've gotten older it gets me more hype which shouldn't be true but john cena i feel like when i was a kid i hated cena but like yep. growing up and like being an adult now i love john cena like this yeah. i could really appreciate this guy and what he's done he's and still a free he agent needs one more title for the all-time record yes the all-time is record. he gonna get it i could i could see it and honestly I don't oh no pun intended <laughs> but I, I i can i can actually see go? it happening yeah but it's just a matter of when he's a free agent now yep. i'm thinking maybe he takes on like a rock role from back in the day where he's just going in and out of hollywood he made his grand return at mania fought on raw and he's gone to the sunset maybe we'll see him again in the back end of the year maybe we see him next year yep. but i'm glad that he's listed as a free agent so we do know that yep. he's still somewhere yeah, he's in. Coming back and he was in france yep. people were taking photos with him i thought we were going to see him mm -hmm. at backlash we didn't see him but He's still around so he's showing that he wants to be there obviously there's something brewing <laughs> you mentioned the rock it's been 28 days since we've seen the final boss oh man i need the rock back we need him back you need him back we yeah. know i saw some videos he's still doing some final boss stuff on instagram uh post some videos of training doing some maa training he's doing a new movie for a24 when do we see the rock back probably yeah. Maybe the SummerSlam. I'm thinking SummerSlam. You know what? He did say the final boss is going to go away for a bit, which hurt yep. my soul, hurt your oh, soul. Heartbroken. But <laughs> I do think he's going to come back 
for Survivor Series, and I think yep. that's where maybe we get the Bloodline Civil War. That would make the most sense. Bloodline However, Civil War, yeah, I know, just I dropped it. That's boom, it. Boom, mic drop. Yeah. However, though, I am thinking SummerSlam because if The Rock wasn't even involved, I'd still say The Rock will make an appearance at SummerSlam. Yep. So that's looking like that's what it's going to be. And yeah, we just need him back. Maybe the final boss is going to like bring order to this all. I hope. Yeah. I, I pray. don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe he goes with Solo and they're the bad guys it could be i i love the heel rock like the final yep. boss is like one of my favorite characters ever and i know we always joke about him here so i'm really looking forward to his return and there's one last name on this piece of paper one last name and they keep hinting at him and they keep talking about him coming back the former reigning defending undisputed champion of the world brock lesnar we're gonna see him soon i think when's we it gonna happen I hope soon because yeah. there was a lot of rumors not getting into it if you know you know that maybe he would be done but then yeah. Hunter's like no nah, Brock is yeah. actually like he's good he's yeah. just at home in Canada yeah. <laughs> so he's he's clearly coming back skinning animals and yep <laughs> looking food. crazy <laughs> like he's he's just doing his cowboy Brock stuff yep. and I love it in terms of when he's coming back on TV, you know what it's going to be? It's going to be Triple H calling him on the phone, going, hey, Brock, you want to work next Sunday? And he's going to yep. say, yep. Or he's going to say no, and they're going to try it again in months. Yep. That's the kind of timing he's on, which he fully deserves. I respect Brock Lesnar. He's one of the greatest athletes we've ever seen in both pro sports and in wrestling. Mm -hmm. So just with that being said, I need him back. We all need yeah. him back. We need the Brock on, train. Uh, do you see him come back to Raw or SmackDown? I see him probably going raw if it's one of the brands, but historically he has done both. I would want him back as a babyface though, hot take. Yeah. I really love when he interacts with the crowd, yeah. when he was like doing his own promos with the cavalry hat and yeah. like it was amazing, some of his best work. So if we could get like a babyface Brock Lesnar to come back, maybe take on like off the top of my head, I don't really like know the heel that he could fight today. Maybe someone heel turns and he fights him, but. And we do have a lot of villains right now, the bloodline also have uncle howdy oh a lot of they teeth there with hinting at that we keep getting qr codes but we haven't seen anything yet so yes Still i guess that's something to look forward to maybe uh upcoming raw tonight on raw who knows yeah, hopefully maybe. i'm thinking if there's another qr card i'll try and scan it and not be scared because the last <laughs> one's been you know tripping me out i'm like oh i can't watch this so it's gonna be good hopefully uncle howdy i thought we were gonna get him honestly at backlash yep. we didn't we yep. got another hint and i'm thinking the white six is gonna happen yep. so maybe that's their first target it's spooky it, yeah if you didn't know me. the uh the white family actually did attack brock lester multiple times okay. back in their prime maybe there's our monday story maybe brock comes back and then they jump him again that would, oh my god could you imagine <laughs> that could like if that was how they got introduced that would be amazing yeah. so that could be it awesome but anyway so i think that's going to do it for us today that's it it's an awesome first show really happy to start this and talk with you about the wwe yeah. and i'm really looking forward to monday night raw tonight so don't forget guys you could also follow us on instagram we made one it is called riot underscore rumble we're gonna be posting some highlights there from the show maybe do some polls about what you guys think is going to happen in the next couple of weeks and with that being said you guys can catch us next week on monday live from the media hub on riotradio.ca this has been riot rumble i'm justin this is dan and thank you guys so much for watching thank you